Today's video is brought to you by the good people over at PatriotPost.us. They are an excellent source of news information, not pips, and all that good stuff. And a link for them will be in the description box. So when you head over there and subscribe, tell them that ABL sent you. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the CBC. That is a Canadian broadcasting corporation cutting out Donald Trump's cameo from the movie Home Alone 2 during the Christmas holiday break. It might have been on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or both. Now, before I even get into it, I got to back up a little bit here to tell you a little bit about Canada in case you don't know. Conservatives don't really exist in Canada when you're talking about politics. Everything is pretty much run by liberals. Even the conservatives are kind of liberal. So you got to understand that first and foremost. This thing that happened with Donald Trump checking out of the movie is not anything that is a surprise for Canada. Not at all. Now, some may say, well, the CBC is not a privately owned corporation. You know, it doesn't really matter what Canada as a nation does politically. Well, yes, it does matter because the CBC is at least partially state funded, if not totally state funded. So we're talking about a state funded media cutting out the president of your neighboring nation, the United States. I mean, what are we really doing? Which direction are we going in as a country if you are Canada? You know, I'm thinking from you guys' point of view uh, across the northern border, what's really going on there when you do something like this? Now, is it a big deal? In itself, just cutting the president out of the movie, you know, the five second cameo, it's not really that big of a deal if it were just a private company and that's it. However, we're talking about state funded media. This points to a bigger issue. OK, when you can just say, all right, we're state funded and by the will of us, we'll just take him out of the movie and not even show you him. What else are you willing to censor that is, you know, funded by the state? OK. We see a lot of that happening here in the U.S. You know, the, the Confederate statues being removed or put into a museum, hid away so can nobody see. That right there is a form of state-funded censorship. Now, I think the problem with the Confederate statues is that it's not a national issue, it's a local issue. So if enough, you know, idiots get into power locally, they can just go ahead and do that and there's no problem. It's not necessarily a federal thing. The CBC, however, is funded by the state, which if I'm mistaken, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, but that's federal. That's, you know, the country of Canada, not just, you know, uh, Toronto, Ontario or Edmonton, Alberta. It's Canada as an entire nation. But I digress. My point is that you have the state, federal, local, whatever, controlling certain things and they're censoring history away from you. OK. Let's go back to the Confederate statues right quick. People are saying, oh, we got to get rid of the Confederate statues. They were built a lot of times well after the war to intimidate people. Well, the reality is that when you censor these statues, when you take them down, destroy them, take them to a museum or whatever the case may be, what you're doing is you're shaping the way that the United States history actually went. You're shaping it in favor of the victor and you're totally ignoring the loser. Yes, the Confederates did lose, but what was the war really over? Some are going to say, oh, it's because like what I was always told during school is that the North fought the South to end slavery. But how can that be so when the North had slaves in five states all throughout the war and after all the South slaves were ordered to be freed? It doesn't make any sense. The emancipation only applied to states in rebellion. That means the South, not the North. They were allowed to keep their slaves. West Virginia seceded from the Confederacy to the Union during the war with slaves and were allowed to keep their slaves. So I'm just trying to figure out what's really going on. When you censor history like that, when you remove these Confederate monuments of important people, your Nathan Bedford Forrest and et cetera, what happens is a lot of that history it gets lost on people. How can what I say be true when there's no statues of them, when there's no commemorance of them, when they pretty much get shunned and hid away? 
You see what I'm saying? You're shaping the way that history is remembered by an entire nation, an entire generation of people. Same thing with the whole Home Alone 2 situation. Maybe in Canada, you're Justin Trudeau's, a.k.a. President Blackface, a.k.a. President Red Dye Indian, a.k.a. President Pocahontas, whatever. Justin Trudeau, he may be the face of the nation as far as we're going to behave this way. We're going to be super liberal. We're going to be far to the left. And that's how we're going to carry ourselves. A guy like Donald Trump, we have to just totally hate. Now, there was an excuse from the CBC talking about, oh, the cameo was cut due to, uh, you know, it's TV. We got to put in commercials. First of all, the cameo was like five seconds. You know, Trump said all of eight words. Okay. It was not a long cameo at all. You know, it wasn't a whole big scene. It was just a cameo, quick little, you know, in and out. That's it. Okay. That, that was all that there was to it. So I, I find it hard to believe you needed to get five seconds from the Donald Trump cameo to fit in a commercial. What commercial is five seconds long? I don't know, but I digress. My point is that that excuse doesn't make any sense. And then when Donald Trump announced he was going to run in 2015, that year is the first year that the movie was played with Donald Trump's cameo taken out. Because this is an old movie, obviously. This is from the 90s when Macaulay Call came back in the day when he was the man or the, the little boy, whatever. So this is an old movie, you know, 30, 25 years old, whatever. It had been played before on CBC, but it wasn't until Donald Trump ran for president as a Republican did it get censored. Now, some are going to say, why did it get censored? It's because, like I said, people want, in Canada at least, maybe the elected officials, they want Trudeau to be the example all Canadians look up to rather than Donald Trump. People want to forget that Donald Trump was loved by everybody all over the world before he became a Republican and ran for president. That's why he was in Home Alone 2. That's why he was on the black sitcom Fresh Prince. That's why he had a TV show for, what, 11 years, The Apprentice. This is why he was hanging out with rappers and Muhammad Ali and Rosa Parks and Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton before he became a Republican and ran for president. It's very simple. It's not really hard to understand. But the CBC, they are taking the next step and saying, okay, we're going to just totally erase any kind of positive imagery of him because now the narrative is that he's a bad guy. This is also what Stalin would do. This is a very well-known tactic. If he would be in the picture with a person that became an enemy, the picture would be physically altered to remove that individual. So you wouldn't think that they were a good man or whatever because they would not be alongside Joseph Stalin. It's the same exact thing going on here with the movie. Is it a lower level? Of course, but it's the same uh, spirit behind it. In order to have liberalism be what it is, you got to have government control. OK, this is what Nazi Germany did. Everything was just micromanaged, it's papers, it's all kind of stuff. That's what liberalism will get you in the end. All these big taxes. How are you going to enforce the taxes? You got to have people that are out there, uh, you know, IRS agents, police officers, paperwork everywhere. That's what communism will bring you. It'll get you to the point where the government controls whatever you see. You go to communist China right now, try to get on the Internet natively without a VPN. Ain't no Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, none of that. Google, none of that. OK, they control what you see for the most part. That's how. That is over there in a communist state. And then once you get into a communist state with no kind of economy, then you have no food. That is the end game for communism. And I don't think Canada would get to that point. I hope they don't. But a thing like this, this is kind of just reading the tea leaves. You're seeing where the whole situation is going. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think the removal of Donald Trump's cameo from Home Alone 2 could reveal a bigger issue. Like I said before, it's not a big issue just isolated by itself. But when you look at Justin Trudeau, when you look at no conservatives really existing in Canada, once you look at the whole situation with the social stuff, the, you know, the LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, every letter in the alphabet takeover of certain places, especially in liberal places, then you begin to see a bigger picture. This is just one puzzle piece of the bigger picture, which is liberalism creating decay in society. 
But am I just going too far into tenfold hat land? You guys let me know what you think about the whole situation and whatever other comments you have, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I gotta say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.